Hello. So we'll be starting in about three minutes. Thank you for joining Africa Potential Investor Relations Call. Um, we just wanted to give time for more people to join. We'll be starting in about three minutes. Thank you everyone for joining. All right, we're joining about a minute. Um, I can see that more people have joined. Um, you're welcome, everyone. Um, we'll be starting in about a minute. All right. Thank you. Thank you. Patience. Thank you for joining the call. Good morning. Good afternoon, ladies and gentlemen. I hope we're all doing well today. My name is Karen Utiono, and I am delighted to officially welcome you to Africa Prudential's Investor Relations Call for Half Year 2024 Financial Performance. <laughs> Today's session is an opportunity for us to share key insights into recent financial performance, discuss the strategic initiatives that we have undertaken so far, and address some of the questions you, our shareholders, our stakeholders, our investors might have. Our commitment to transparency and continuous engagement with our shareholders remains a top priority, and we're here to provide you with a complete overview of our achievement and our future outlook. Moderating today's session is our CEO and Managing Director, Katrin Huosu. Katrin Huosu will lead us through the presentation and subsequent Q&A session. Also um, moderating with her is our CFO, Taufik Gewa. He will take us through the financial performance. With our extensive experience and deep understanding of the capital markets, Katrin is well equipped to guide us on today's discussion. Before we begin, I'd like to remind us that this session is being recorded and will be uploaded on our website. So after the session, you can also watch a recap. If you have questions, kindly make use of the chat box to drop your questions and they will be attended to immediately after the session. Thank you very much for joining once again. Um, now, without further ado, I'd like to hand over to Catherine to take us through the company's overview and key highlights. Catherine, over to you. Thank you, Karen. Good morning, good afternoon, good evening, depending on the part of the world where you are joining from. Thank you for joining this investor call. As introduced, my name is Catherine Wosu. I'm excited to be here today, as this is my first investor call as the Managing Director CEO of Africa Prudential PL. As you may be aware, I was appointed six months ago to lead the team. Thank you once again. I will be presenting the overview 
of the company's performance, the operating environment. Why my colleague Figiwa will speak into the financial numbers. After that, I'll speak about our business outlook. At the end, you'll have the opportunity to ask your questions and we'll be glad to provide answers to them. Africa Potential is a leading share registration company that is listed on the Nigerian exchange platform. We're actually the only listed registrar on the exchange. Following our listing in 2013, we have consistently paid dividends to shareholders and we have shareholder fund, which stood at 9.7 billion naira. We are also certified with three different certifications to support our business objectives. I also 9001-2015 on quality management system. I also 22301-2019 on business continuity management system. I also 2701-2013 on information security management system. Over 2.3 million shareholders and investors are supported on our platforms. And we have created three bespoke applications for our businesses, which were developed during our digital technology journey. I'll be speaking about our services. What do we do? The major function of the registrar is to create, update, and maintain accurate register of investors. This we have done efficiently. We provide innovative services to our shareholders to meet their unique investment needs. We efficiently handle the payment of dividend, coupon, redemptions, and all kinds of payments to investors as approved by the clients. We support our clients to conduct seamless corporate meetings. Our APEMS application provides online real-time voting result presentation. We have a customer relationship management application. We provide a user-friendly investor platform. It is equipped with chatbots and other AI-driven engagement tools. Our core registrar application, GreenPole, has the capacity to handle multi-listing transactions and different kinds of transactions that may come up. We effectively engage our regulators and other operators to maintain good relationship and collaboration. A major need of every decision maker is data-driven insights. We have adopted AI-driven tools that enable us to provide accurate data to our clients to aid their decision making. Mm -hmm. I will be speaking on our journey so far. Where did we start? We started as a department of United Bank for Africa PLC over 50 years ago. In 2006, we were incorporated as a limited liability company. By 2013, following regulatory directives, we were spun off from the bank and we changed our name from UBA Registrars to Africa Prudential Registrars PLC. Also in 2013, shortly after our listing, we did the right issue that was oversubscribed, showing the confidence that investors had in Africa Prudential. And part of the utilization of the funds raised was the acquisition of USC registrars. This brought about exponential growth and increased client base for us. In 2017, the need for business transformation became apparent and we modified our name to Africa Prudential PLC and subsequently diversified into the digital technology space. By 2019, we launched an in-house innovation lab and this honed our creativity and innovation into application development for different industries. Since then, 2020 and up to date, we have continued to add to our service offerings. 
We introduced products like infrastructure services, talent outsourcing, to mention a few. Our core values are excellence, enterprise, and execution. And as a business, we have a purpose statement that says empowering organizations to achieve more through innovative and beneficial solutions. We have dynamic, agile, experienced management team led by my humble self. They are here. They handle different roles. They are the team that are driving this business to success. Next slide, please. As a capital market registrar, we have experience in various kinds of transactions. We have handled over 60 equity registers, over 38 bond transactions, mutual fund accounts, right issues, private placements, public offers, mergers and acquisitions, and a lot more. We handle dollarized transactions as well. I'll be speaking to the awards that we received because in recognition of our performance in this market, we have received several awards by different organizations. We received the award as the most innovative share register of the year. We received Employers Excellence Award. We also received Best Company of the Year by Cooperative Rating and Award Society of Nigeria. We received the Register of the Year Award by Business Day. We had a hat trick as we received consecutively for three years. We were awarded the Distinguished Company on Diversity, Equity, and Inclusion. What are our competitive advantage? We're a customer-centric organization and will continue to create exceptional experience to our customers. Having gone into technology, we ensure that we're technology-driven in what we do. We are strong on corporate governance and have a very strong and dynamic board who drive the company. We went through the rigors of getting certified by ISO on information security management system to ensure that we are strengthened and we are positioned to effectively manage data. We know that data is gold, and if you don't do the right thing, something can go wrong. So we are poised to continue to manage data efficiently and in a secure manner. Our journey into technology development has given us the experience needed to ensure that all we do is technology driven. Our people, we have committed and dedicated people who are driving this business. I'll be speaking to the operating environment. Next slide, please. In H1 2024, the global interest rate declines were less than expected due to ongoing inflation in key economies, leading to a slight increase in growth driven by the US economy. The World Bank forecasts global GDP growth rate to stabilize at 2.6 by end of 2024, despite geopolitical tensions across the world and high interest rates. We all know that the Ukraine-Russia war is still there. Ukraine-Russia war is still there. And Israeli-Palestinian war is not yet over. On the domestic side, the Nigerian economy grew by 2.98% in the period under review, down from 3.46 that was, was witnessed in quarter three, four of 2023, reflecting low oil production levels. Non-oil sector slowed down as well. The non-oil sector decelerated due to the rising inflation, volatile exchange rates, and high interest rates. Anticipated recovery, we expect Modest recovery in H2 2024, we projected growth rate of 3.3% for the year. 
as the oil sector shows signs of improvement. We are glad to announce that inflation, inflation rate that was 34.19% as of June 2024 has gradually started to come down. I'll be calling on my colleague, Taufi Giwa, to speak on our financial performance for H1 2024. Taufi, please. Thank you very much, Catherine, for a nice presentation so far. Greetings to everyone forever. You are joining us from all over the globe. Thank you very much for joining our first investors call session for the year 2024. I'm Tavi Kabiola, you are the Chief Financial Officer of the organization. I'll be presenting highlights of the performance of our organization for half year ending June 30th, 2024. Karen, next slide, please. Our gross earnings stands at 2 billion 59 million as at half year 2024, as against 2 billion 187 million recorded in last year 2023. Our net operating expense stands at 896 million as at half year 2024, as against 1 billion 29 million as at half year June 2023. This represents a minus 30 percent year on year decline. And this could be attributed to the discontinuation of our digital technology business. Our net operating income stands as 2 billion as at half year 2024, as against 1.6 billion recorded in half year 2023. This represents a 24% year on year growth. All the other and our profit before tax stands at 113 billion as at half year 2024, as against 603 million recorded half year last year. This represents an 87% year on year growth. On the other hand, our profit after tax stands at 791 million as at half year 2024, as against 422 million recorded half year 2023. This represents an 87% year on year growth. Our MS per share stands at 39 COBO as at half year 2024, as against 21 COBO recorded half year 2023. The total asset we carry as at the year to date of June 2020 stands at 29.9 billion as against 20.4 billion recorded half year 2023. This represents 46% year on year growth. I'll be taking further questions on these financials at the end of the session. At this point, I'll be adding back over to my chief executive in person of catching also to continue with the rest of the slide. Thank you. Thank you, Taufik. And thank you everyone for continuing on the call. I'll be speaking to our business outlook. What are the things we want to strategically drive? We will maintain our focus on the fixed income market, taking advantage of high interest rates to ensure consistent returns to investors. Our investor engagement is very critical to us so we will continue to leverage your multi-channel approach to provide best-in-class customer experience across all our touch points. We will consistently excite our clients by providing proactive data-driven insights for their business decision-making and growth. And by so doing, they become partners with us and we will lead to bigger businesses. We will strengthen partnerships with key stakeholders to drive profitability and increase market penetration. Cost optimization is key to our growth and will continue to drive our costs down, maintaining quality products and services. Risk management is also very key to us. We'll drive our core business through leveraging a robust risk management framework. We will launch additional range of new products and innovative services. These offerings are designed to the diverse needs and expectations of our esteemed investors. We will continually pursue operational efficiency through process reengineering and automation to enhance operational efficiency, aiming to maximize service delivery, boost our customer satisfaction, and improve our revenue generation position. And on this note, I want to say a very big thank you for listening. I will be ready to take your questions. 
Thank you. Terry. Thank you very much, Catherine, for that beautiful presentation. Thank you, Taufik, for the for breaking everything down. Um, please um feel free to um ask your question in the box and I would um um read it out to wh whom we may concern. Please feel free to drop your questions. I have some questions already. Some people have dropped theirs. Feel free to drop your questions in the chat box and we would um, respond to them. Taufik, I have a question for you here from someone. Um, Hold on, let me read it out to you. Uh, okay, it says, this speaks to your interest income surge. Can you elaborate on the factors that contributed to the significant rise in interest income? Were there any specific assets or investments that drove this growth? Taufik, over to you, please. All right, thank you very much, Karen. Basically, we took advantage of the prevailing high interest rates used in the fixed income market space. We did that by investing more in fixed income instruments such as treasury bills, the fixed placements, the commercial papers and bonds to actually grow earnings from our fixed in, in, uh, from investment income. With particular focus on asset classes that are not less than 20% 20, 20 interest rates, with yields that are not less than 18% across all our portfolio. That's what we did basically. Oh, awesome. Thank you very much. I, I hope that answers your question. Um, please keep the questions coming in. Um, Catherine, I have one for you here. I think you'd be best suited to answer this particular question. Um, this speaks to performance drivers. This person says, beyond interest income, what were the key drivers of the strong performance reports in your HY 2024 results? Catching over to you, please. Thank you. Thank you, Karen. And thanks for that question. Beyond income from interest in and investments, we've actually onboarded 10 clients within the period under review. Three equity in transactions, two bond transactions, and five funds. So this brings additional income to our business and we'll continue to do more to engage more clients because that is our core business and that is the bulk of our, re our revenues will be coming from. Thank you, Claire. Awesome. Thank you very much for that one. I have another question here from Cyril, but before I read it out, I think Catherine will be best suited to answer this question. I have another one here um, for the CFO. Um, CFO, this person is speaking to the court cost, uh, cost cotton. The person says, what specific strategies were implemented to achieve the cost reductions? Are these cost cutting measures sustainable in the long term or were they one-off actions? CFO over to you, sir. All right, thank you. So basically we have internalized our cost control strategy in-house. So it's something that is sustainable and I'll describe it as a basically strict adherence to our procurement and bidding processes. We also have sourced some jobs externally to save costs, where we know that by so doing in house, it will be more expensive. Then also, we do a kind of monitoring of cost elements and drivers within the organization, with much emphasis on energy consumption and other administrative expenses. That's just basically what we do. Thank you. Okay, awesome. Abdul Latif, I see your question. Um, I'm going to ask your question shortly. Um, let me go over to the next one because I'm taking it according to, you know, the people that ask um, first. This speaks to growth opportunities. I think Catherine will be best suited to answer this. And I think in all these answers, some of your, your questions might also be, be answered. So this person says, given the current economic environment, what are the key growth opportunities Africa Prudential is exploring in the short um, term to medium term? Are there plans to diversify into the new market or services? Can you highlight the size of the opportunity that you see in the new market or products that you're expanding into? Um, Catherine, please, over to you. Thank you. Okay, uh, thank you, Karen. Um, Africa Prudential just concluded her three years strategy retreat. And it was mind blowing opportunities that we see, both within Nigeria, and outside the shores of this country. So very soon we'll be unpacking 
the things we want to do. And I tell you, the opportunities are great and we're poised to take up these opportunities, grow our revenue base and uh, uh, satisfy our customers. So yes, there are a lot of opportunities. Thank, Thank you. you. That was awesome. Um, so I think I have one for you here by Modestus. It speaks to the operating environment. It says, what assurances do you have for investors that you will sustain this growth in the current year? Um, Catherine, you can also pitch in. Okay, yes. <laughs> All right. Tafik. Thank you very much for that question. Uh, we are very intentional on our strategy, financial strategies in terms of how we want to ensure that we grow our profits and also ensure that we continue the good work we are doing currently. As you can see, we have very done a very impressive performance as an half year. And with the way we are going about our strategies, we know that we're going to be closing this year favorably for the investor's sake. So basically, just juggling our investment strategy, ensuring that we grow our revenue baseline, just like the CEO said. And I think with that, we'll be able to edge the forces that is working, the ties against us. Thank you very much. Awesome. Thank you very much. Um, I have another one here from Cyril. I think I would ask um, um, this to, I think this will go to Catherine. Um, I'm not sure, Cyril, I understand your question. So let's move to Abdul Latif. Um, Abdul Latif says, considering that there are many equity offers in the market, what should we expect from registrars from the registrar business for the rest of the year? Catherine, over to you, please. <laughs> okay. um, thank you, Abdul Latif, for this question. We have learned our lessons with what happened in 2004 offer. So, and that is why if you look at the offers that are in place now, they are all being done with technology. So the problem that we had with previous offers, we are not going to experience that again. So registrars have taken up what is going on as a very good opportunity to prove to the world that we can do it. Africa Prudential has created Inven, which I mentioned earlier, an application that will enable people even to buy this, and the issues of KYC will not come up. So we're excited with what is going on, and we'll continue to do our best. Thank you. Okay, thank you. The questions are flooding in. Okay, Cyril um, corrected his question. I think this will go to Taufik. Um, he says, I mean, what do you intend to do with your with your humorous retained earnings? I'm not sure. Taufik, do you understand that? What did he say? He says, what do you intend to do with your humorous retained earnings? All right. Uh, I get what you're saying. Is that what do we intend to do with our humongous retained earnings? Uh, yes. Basically, these are decisions that will be taken by the board. You understand? The board of directors are the owners of the company. They will take the decision as to what they want to do with the retained earnings. I'm sure the decision in the long run is to plug it back into the business and reinvest it into the business to grow the business. Thank you. Awesome. I already just asked a question, but I think he might need to um, um, create more, more clarity. But is, this is, um, should, should the shareholders of Africa Potential be expecting a similar benefit declared by UCAP in no distant time? Catherine, I think this speaks to the interim dividend. I think you'd be best to, to answer that. <laughs> Okay, thanks a lot, uh, Ayodeji, for this question. <laughs> um, we have done interim dividend, and uh, we are a company of our own, so we are not just following what UCAP did, but at the right time, we take the right decision. Relating it to the question on what we want to do with our huge uh, uh, retained earnings, there's a lot of business expansion opportunities, and we'll surely take them up. Okay, great. Awesome. Um, Taufik, I think this is for you. This is from Joke Adeyemi. She says, having recorded an impressive performance in your half year, what strategy in increasing return on investment for investment and to pay them higher dividends? So I think these are shareholders. They are really concerned about getting higher dividends. Taufik, do you have anything to say to your shareholders? <laughs> All right. So like I said, Internally, we have, you know, you know, we have geared towards ensuring that uh, shareholders enjoy dividends going forward. And like I said, we have internal strategies how to deploy our investments to ensure that we you know we edge 
against um, making any form of losses, but also ensure that we grow profitability at the end of the year. So this is what we do, we have, what we have been working on, and I can assure you that this will continue as the year ends and investors will smile at the end of the day. Thank you. Awesome. We want to smile. I'm sure everybody wants to smile. <laughs> so I, um, I'm going to take this last one from Ayobami. There are lots of questions here, and I promise, promise that we would answer each and every question after. Um, this one I, I would I would direct to Catherine because Catherine is very passionate about this. This I think this will speak to our product, Inven. She says, "Can you provide an update on the performance of the new product?" and services launched on the first half of the year. Catherine, over to you. Thank you very much. The in product event has been doing so as at the end of June, we had over 6,000 subscribers on that particular application. Because beyond seeing what you have with the registrars, we have information all every time information as is happening in the market. So Inven is here to help everybody, whether you're a shareholder to the client be managed by Africa Prudential or not. Please take your time and go and log on to, to Inven. I will not leave the application again. Thank you. Thank you very much, Katrin. Thank you for that amazing answer. Um, <laughs> the shareholders are very excited. Please go on ahead and, and download Inven. Inven is a good product, it's a good platform for you to be able to manage your investment, to update your thin IDs. You can track all your shares in one place. Um, so I'll, I'll hand over to Catherine to give us a closing note. Um, this has been a very interesting session. I'm sure the shareholders are happy. I am happy. Um, so yeah, Catherine, over to you, man. Wow. It's been a very interesting session, and I'm so glad for your participation and all the questions, they are still coming in. We assure you that we'll look at those questions and make sure that we send answers to you. Thank you so much for being part of our call today, and we assure you that Africa Prudential will be doing a lot. Very soon, you will see what we'll be doing, and you'll see how it's going to impact our company. If you are not a shareholder of Africa Potential, please proceed to buy Africa Potential shares because there is a lot in the offering. Thank you. Thank you very much, Catherine, for that amazing, amazing closing note. Thank you, everyone, for being a part of this meeting. Thank you, our shareholders. Thank you to the investors, to the brokers, everyone in the capital market community that is a part of this meeting today. We really appreciate you. We appreciate your time. Um, if you want to listen to the recording, this, this session was recorded, as I earlier mentioned. If you want to listen to the recording, just head over to, um, after this session, you can head over to our YouTube, um, Africa Potential. We'll also upload it on our website. Thank you, everyone, for being a part of this meeting. Um, so we'll catch up next time. I say bye. <laughs> bye, everyone. Thank you. Bye-bye. Uh, yeah, have a great day ahead. Bye. Bye.